Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Salat wa Salam ala Rasulillah. Another night from the few nights that are in Ramadan as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls them Ayyam al Ma'budat. And before we know it, the blessed month will be finished. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we retain that energy and that desire to draw nearer to Him and to, to take from the blessings and the treasures of this month and that we leave this month having been forgiven all of our sins and having started a new page with our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah save us from hellfire and write us among His righteous servants during this month. Allahumma ameen. We're continuing with our reflections on incredible moments from the biography of the Prophet sallallahu And tonight's story is, is really one of the most moving very, actually it's, it's, it's an incredible, but it's also a difficult story to live through. Because it has a lot of pain for the Prophet ﷺ, for his family, and for many of the companions. It is a story that, has, that takes place in the sixth year of Al Hijrah. And so we are in Al Medina, and the narrator of the story, most of the story is narrated by our mother, Aisha, the wife of the Prophet wasallam, may Allah be pleased with her. And she describes that she was with uh, the army of the Prophet wasallam as they were returning from an expedition. And she had to relieve herself and in those times, uh, the homes did not have bathrooms, but also when they were on travel, there's no rest stop. So they would go to al qala they would go far away, they would relieve themselves and they would come back. So Sayyidah uh, Sayyida Aisha went to relieve herself, but when she came back, she found that the army had left. And Sayyidah Aisha relates that she was young in age, so she was very light. So when they came to lift the seat that she was sitting in, they couldn't tell the difference when she was there or not. And so they thought she was there and they left, and she came, there's no army. So imagine our mother Aisha is in the middle of the desert without a single human being in sight. So she sits and she waits. And she thought perhaps they would notice that she wasn't there and would come back for her or something like this. Our Messenger وسلم, used to appoint one of the companions to come at the tail of the army a little bit delayed precisely for these situations. In case somebody gets hurt or gets lost or something, that there would be somebody help them. So on this expedition, it was the noble companion Safwan ibn Muattim. And he comes and he finds a Sayyida Aisha and he recognizes her. And so he's shocked with the situation. He says, oh Aisha, what has happened? And our mother Aisha does not respond. It's a difficult situation and what will she say? So she's telling us that Safwan takes the animal that he has with him. He leaves it for Sayyidah Aisha and he turns away. And with his back to her, he says, mount the animal. Yani, we're talking about two of the greatest companions. Our mother Aisha and Safwan is an exemplary companion. And of course, they, they wouldn't even dream of doing something wrong. But the situation is difficult. But he's making sure to give her Comfort in case, you know, when they get on an animal, if something is exposed or something, she's very comfortable. And she says she mounted the animal. She says the entire trip, he did not exchange a word with her. Again, for honor and comfort of everyone, he took the animal and led it. But as they were catching up with the army, who catches a glimpse of them but the head of the hypocrites, who is... Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salud. Now, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salud has been after the Prophet وسلم, for years. Taking away parts of the army, leaving him exposed in the most desperate moments. Nothing is working. This is the sixth year of the Hijrah. So, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salud hatches a truly evil plot. He sets a statement, I'm going to have difficulty translating it. He says, I swear by God, she did not escape him, 
and he did not escape her. The statement is very indecisive, it's very abstract. But he's trying to cook a rumor that will create division in Medina, a new type of plot to test the Muslims. And so this sentence continues. And what happens is that spreads through Medina, people start adding to the story until some companions explicitly state, Astaghfirullah Azim, that the wife of the Prophet and uh, Safwan fornicated when they were alone. Astaghfirullah Azim. And for this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it in the Quran al if. Al kadhib in Arabic is a lie. Al if is greater than a lie. It is, it is worse than a lie. And we'll come to the Quranic commentary in Surah Al Nur. Sayyidah Aisha, actually, what's happening during this time? She actually doesn't know. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy on her, when she came back to Al Medina, she became very ill. And so this whole time, She's in the house, she has no idea that all of the Medina is talking about her honor. And she tells us, I did not sense anything except that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to come into my house and it seemed like he was carrying a burden. He was concerned about something. She says she noticed this because it was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's manner that he would be gentle with her and kind with her. And now he was just saying, how are you? And very brief words. And he seemed very concerned with something. And I want you to really appreciate our Messenger wasallam. What does it take for a whole city to be talking about your family and to not distress your wife? You don't tell her what's going on while you're carrying this burden day in and day out. What happens? Let's take every lens on the story, or a few. Our Messenger وسلم, the revelation has stopped coming. For an entire month, 30 days, there is no revelation from the heavens. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not revealed or sent Angel Jibreel to say they are innocent yet. But remember, the Prophet ﷺ is the Messenger of Allah and he's the head of Medina. If he says, bring Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Sirul and throw him in jail, guess what people are going to do? Exactly what he said. Yes. But our Messenger ﷺ is teaching us a valuable lesson. You never use your power or authority to discharge your personal affairs. So the Prophet ﷺ does not mix between his authority as the messenger of God or the leader of a city to solve a problem that yes is harmful to the society but at the end is a, is a problem of his house. So he's waiting for the situation to be resolved in the society so that when we face a problem we don't say the messenger of Allah took a shortcut or we don't say I'm the head of my family or I'm the head of the masjid or I'm the head of this committee I'm going to use my authority to take care of whatever problem or whatever quarrel I have with such and such person. This is a lesson we take. But the Messenger وسلم, is distressed. It's very difficult. And the Medina is broken into four camps. Four camps. Most people are part of the silent majority. They don't believe what's said, but they're not saying anything against it. And the Quran will reprimand them for not being decisive, but most of them are in the silent majority. There's a group like Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul and other hypocrites that are fanning the flames. And they're adding, and the reason you can tell they're adding is what the Messenger of Allah says towards the end of the month. In other words, it starts an abstract statement, and then they did this, and then it's, maybe it's not the first time, or maybe they did this before. And you see evidences of this, because the Messenger of Allah has to say more things towards the end of the month. A third group is rejecting this lie. They are believers 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised one of them in Surah An-Nur. It is the noble companion, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, and his wife. And his wife says, Abu Ayyub, what do you think of what you heard? Abu Ayyub says to his wife, if it was you, would you do something like this? And she says, no. He says, if it was me, would I do something like this? She says, absolutely not, God forbid. So he says, and Aisha is better than you, and Safwan is better than me. And the Qur'an praised them, Surah An-Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 12. سَمِعْتُمُوهُ ظَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بِأَنفُسِهِمْ خَيْرًا وَقَالُوا هَذَا إِفْكٌ مُبِينٌ If only when you heard it, the believers would think well of themselves. And they would say, this is certainly a disgusting lie. So this was other companions, when they were asked of it, they said, God forbid, I shield my ears and my eyes. But this was still a minority. A fourth group are good companions, but they fell to the whispers of Satan. And so they're also fanning the flames and speaking, but they're not among the hypocrites. Towards the end of the month, a Sayyidah Aisha is going to use the, to the khalat. Again, they have to leave away from the house to use the, the restroom. And she's going with Umm Mustah. Uh, Mustah is her first cousin. So Umm Mustah trips. And she says, curse Mustaf, who's her, her, her son. So Sayyidah Aisha says to his mother, how do you say this about a companion of the Prophet ﷺ who witnessed Badr? Umm Mustaf says, didn't you hear what he said about you? Remember, Sayyidah Aisha, almost a month, she doesn't know what's going on. She said, what did he say? And now Sayyidah Aisha learns that for a month, the entire city is speaking about her honor. She comes back to the Messenger of Allah, and she asks permission to go to the house of Abu Bakr, her father, for a few days, to get better and to be taken care of. She describes that when she comes, she checks with her mother. She checks with her father. Are people saying this about us? When she sees Abu Bakr, she finds tears in his eyes. Abu Bakr says, Abu Bakr is, is really hurt. Abu Bakr is an honorable man. He says, we, the family of Abu Bakr, in the times of ignorance, no one used to mention us except with good. Now that Allah has honored us with Islam, do people say this about us? Abu Bakr is very hurt. The Prophet ﷺ tries to resolve the situation by gathering everyone and putting it out in the open. So he gathers the people, he comes up onto the member, and he says, O oh people, there are a company among you that have harmed me in my family. And I do not know from my family except for, the, for goodness. And they speak ill about one of my companions, and I do not know from him except for goodness. And he has never entered my house except in my presence. So does the Prophet ﷺ believe the rumors or not? The Prophet ﷺ does not believe the rumors. And there's other evidences we won't have time to go. But many people get confused. The Prophet ﷺ does not believe the rumors, but he's not using his authority to quash all the people that are starting. But as he's trying to calm the situation, they, some of the Aus and Khazraj stand and quarrel, and so he has to say, go back home and let it go. It didn't work. It didn't work. They started quarreling, trying to protect their tribes. The Prophet yeah, and he speaks to many companions. We'll have to go to the end of the story for a time. He comes to the house of Abu Bakr. And he says, Oh Aisha, again, he believes her, but he has to be fair. He says, Aisha, 
if you have done this, then seek repentance from Allah, for Allah is, is the one who grants and accepts repentance most merciful. Sayyidah Aisha says, my tears stop. And she asked her father and mother, will you not answer the messenger of Allah? And Abu Bakr and her mother said, we don't know what to say. So she said, if I admit to something I have not done, you will believe me. And if I say the truth about what I did not do, then you will not believe me. So I find nothing to say except what the father of Yusuf said. فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ So I trust in patience and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help me against that which I have been describing. And she goes and makes dua to, the, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She relates to us, I did not see myself worthy of Qur'an being revealed on my account. Qur'an is a big deal. Qur'an is a big deal. She said, I only hoped that the Messenger of Allah would see a dream that would declare my innocence. But after a month, after the Prophet ﷺ had difficulty in the family, after the society tasted this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the verses in Surah An-Nur. Go back and read them. Chapter number 24, verse 11. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ جَاءُوا بِالْإِفْكِ عُصْبَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ those that you, of you that came with this disgusting lie are a party for you. Do not think that it is bad for you, it is good for you, meaning that they learn from the experience and set this example. To each party among them is their share of the evil they did. And the one that started this, Abdullah ibn Ubay Masood, has a severe punishment. And the verses continue, time gets the best of us. But you go back and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us about the importance of not spreading rumors. And He gives us this rule for our hearts to think well of ourselves and think well of others. And He gives us verses that say, before you accuse the honor of another person, you come with four witnesses that witness the act. And still protecting people is more worthy. It's better to keep the secrets. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about 20 verses revealed in Surah An-Nur about this. Yani in closing, something we take for Ramadan. When you hear something about a person, when you hear a rumor, when our souls inspire us to speak ill about a person or say they're not practicing or not doing this, let us guard our tongues. Let us guard our tongues because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this test in Medina for 30 days, the city was fried, so that we could learn the importance of protecting people's honor and dignity and guarding their secrets and guarding their to our tongues. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our tongues from evil and false speech during this blessed month. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect the honor and dignity of our homes. And with the Ramadan quiz number nine, a verse in the Quran states, Remember when your Lord Allah inspired the angels, I am with you. So make those who believe stand firm and support them. I shall throw fear in the hearts of those that disbelieve. Then strike their necks and strike every finger of them. Please mention the name of the surah and the number of the verse.